what up, what up, what up? So, I did the, my last stream, which unfortunately I didn't get a chance to um, download and put it on YouTube for people to look at. So hopefully, I'll have this one done. Hey, what else, I So, uh, today, someone sent me in a, an Ares to Lore 21, or Tar 21 for some people that are familiar with the Call of Duty scenes and all that stuff. So, I'm going to be working with, on it. Uh, the engine that's going to be going in there is a Wolverine Gen 2 Hydra. Uh, the Tar 21 has an offset nozzle. It It's hard to tell, like, from the just by looking at it right away but if you were to actually see how the um how it sits inside the gearbox itself not sure how well of a viewpoint you might be able to get but it's just slightly downwards just enough to for it to be not centered so you know that's a good option to have you know you have the hydra um an f2 is another engine that's um that could work with it so right now I'm just doing a little bit of prep work here I've got got the engine right here I've got the tar 21 off screen sitting in the box that I'm gonna pull out and we're gonna get it started um, if y'all have any questions or anything like that you know feel free to put it in the chat and all that stuff and when I see it I will answer it you know it doesn't have to be necessarily this. It could be, you know, whatever you want. Like I said, someone wanted me to put this up. I didn't get a chance to stream, or I streamed, but I didn't get a chance to copy my MTW build from start to finish. So I'm gonna try. I'm gonna start trying to save everything, upload it up to another um, channel, and all that stuff. That way, people can take a look. So for the two. For the Tavor, because of how the gearbox is set up, it will typically need to use the universal wiring harness setup, as well as the premium FCU. Um, I've got my soldering here, soldering iron here. I'm going to plug it in a little bit to get it warmed up while I take apart the gun itself. So let me go ahead and throw some, some tunes on, at least to uh, not be completely quiet and all that stuff. Let's get this bad boy out. Luckily, it's made by Ares. Uh, wasn't sure who would have made it because it says it's IWI, but when I saw the Aries mag, I was like, oh, cool, it's made by Aries. And this is the TAR 21. <sighs> Slide that out of the way. So, as people know, the TAR 21 is a bullpup, bullpup configuration for it. Me personally, as far as bullpups, my favorite would be the actual Magpul PDRC uh, because of its size. The, the Tar 21 is a little bit more bulkier for me as far as, you know, how I like, but it has its place. Some people like the futuristic futuristic build of the, the Tar 21. Me personally, just because of all the bulk that's in the back right here, I, you know, I can sit here and try and mitigate that so I'll probably end up like doing like little pauses and all that stuff well yeah pauses in between stream because I have um, the video I have another video up as far as like breaking down this to war in particular so you know by I'll sit here and I got it on my big screen over top overhead This almost looks like it's been pre-upgraded. Cause I don't know, it, it comes with the tool. Okay. So I don't know if uh, the Tavors come with the Allen key. That you know, I've never actually knew about that. 
or if he just put it in here because it's also got a couple extra things sitting in here as well because hmm. I see this and the first thing I think of is there's a MOSFET in it WI R21 disassembly it's been it's been years since I've had to deal with the TAR-21 as far as um, uh, airsoft wise. Just not a lot of people run it, you know? So I'm trying to at least get like the, at least the basics of it down. I should be good to go with it. Cause I mean, I already knew the first step was to remove the pen and slide it in the back. Alright. Uh shoot. There any sort of like music requests and stuff like that? I can I can play that as well. I just got something going on just to, you know, break the awkward silences and stuff. Probably need to turn that down just a tad. I ain't trying to get this thing muted. <laughs> so yeah, if there are any, if there are questions or anything like that, feel free to ask. These things are a pain to get out. Body pins are always a pain. It's always good to have like a magnetic bowl. Um, from for a tech perspective, it's always good to have one. So you can just stick, you know, stick the metal pieces, metal uh, items to it, and then not get in the way. So already knew right off the top, there's a spring that sits right here that helps with as far as the mag release, or not mag release, but the bolt release. You don't want to lose that. All right, that part's done. Well, as soon as I figure out how to get it all apart, putting it back together is going to be actually so much easier. Because it's telling me that I need to remove... Where are my mouse going? I have to remove the rails up top. Oh, no. Just the rear sight. Okay. But there is no rear sight. So I may have to remove the whole rail. No, I don't. Okay. These are all. Do you see front side bars? Dang it. Okay. There. I might have to do that. Since this one doesn't have the rail, I wonder if I can bypass that step. Since I don't see where else I would need to release this, unless I need to let go of the. Um, Just double checking because it's saying that I have to remove, remove some screws, but just by the looks of it, I don't need to do that. All right, let me look up a different one because. From what it's showing, it's. See why they wanted me to do this particular one. Then. Fifteen. 
So they literally removed the entire front end based on the video I'm looking at. Okay, so he did have a front wire at least. Okay. So like I'm I'm going along I'm going along with this as well just to make sure that everything's all done the right way because I don't want to sit here and mess this up and potentially ruin this build for him. So I'm just I'm taking my time looking at what all would need to be done to remove this. Oh, okay. So this is really truly just the the battery link itself. Okay. So and the gearbox feels pretty loosened already, just from those alone. So I'm looking to see what is it rock rotating on. Right, so those are just covers. Those really don't do anything really. So it's locked in with a top up, so that means I do need to remove this front, this whole entire top rail. So how's everybody's evening been? Or how is everyone's evening so far? I know it's Friday. People that are done working are done working. I wonder if it's one of these that actually have to remove both sides in order to, and it's look it's looking to be like that. This is gonna be an interesting evening, or more so, it's gonna be an interesting build itself. One. As far as where is the battery is going to go, I'm not 100% sure where I would want it to be sitting. So, as, as I thought, there is a little locking thing that's keeping it from sliding all the way out. This thing sits on it. So I need to remove the lockdown on it. And it'll get taken care of. Okay, so why huh. 
right, so there is a screw for me to remove that. Okay. Luckily, I was able to remove the, the rod off of the gearbox. And now it's just one more set of the little flathead holders and I can pull them out. I think what I've noticed so far with at least some of the bull pups, there's always like some kind of um I guess you could say a rod that usually holds the um, the entire thing in which I, I I get I get why it's in it helps keeps it in place but sometimes it does get rather annoying oh. the screws there should be four total there just go ahead and remove that that in there. The other three screws are sitting right in there. Is it attached? Yes. Okay. So now I just need to lift this last part and it will come right out because it's it's attached to the wires. Just make sure there's no more screws coming out because there's only one other place for the screws. So, and the spring. So one, one request that the, the guy who sent me this, he wanted me to upgrade the barrel and hop-up setup to a metal hop-up. And he also has an R-hop R -hop barrel that he uh, sent to me to install for him. So, as you can see, there is a huge, well, there's a little bit of a difference as far as the barrel length. So he's going to be a little bit more accurate as far as groupings. And he also said he did a R hop barrel in here, which I can see the patch on the inside. I'll probably give it a good, I'll probably clean the barrel out right, right before I do like the final install or at least do the testing portions of it. So let me go ahead and plug this in. And as you can see, it's a little bit longer. Luckily, he also sent me uh, um, uh, another flash hider with a quick detach suppressor to put on it. So that part, that portion of it's at least taken care of. I just need to get this gearbox out. What are you stuck on? Okay, let me disconnect the motor wiring, and it should slide, yep, it should slide right on out. All right. Now we're going to start getting to the fun stuff. back in so I don't lose them because I've gone through too many toolkits because I've sat here and lost them and it was unnecessary okay so just by looking at it got the bolt bolt cover okay that's the bolt release I believe he also said he wanted the
here. You all are able to see this pretty well. That's true. I'm messaging somebody on the Discord. They got their, um, they had to receive their gearbox because their alignment was really off on their um, fusion engine. And then next thing you know, they've got much better groupings than what they had before. Luckily, this is a quick change spring because I sure would have hated if this thing would have bounced back at me. shouldn't have any effect on the gearbox but if it does then I'll take it out the, the screw I'm talking about is this one up top um, this particular one right here it doesn't look like it goes through so I don't think I need to worry about that one too much that one controls the um, the bolt the bolt catch for when you adjust your hop up I do not want to lose any of these springs. Surprisingly, this is actually a pretty clean gearbox. I mean, normally I'm, you know, with, China, with the Chinese stuff, it's like, ugh, it's all over the place type thing. But this one's actually pretty clean. I do some, I must say so myself. If anything, you probably just bought it and then 
sent it out to me. I think that's what he ended up doing. Rather than me having one. So let me go ahead and grab these shims out. Because when, you, when you're when you doing these builds, you can take everything out. The gears, the shims, the motor, all that. All the internals, basically. Because you're not going to need any of it. In as far as so if I have reference points, does the Devar twenty one need a specific trigger board? Is it so? As far as the trigger board, it actually uses the universal wiring kit setup for it. Um, I think for Polestar, if you do one of theirs, they have a specific trigger board for the, for it in particular. But for the Tavor, it's just the actual universal one. So it's literally this board. It'll sit, you know, somewhere inside the gearbox. There's there's no particular positioning where in here. For all intents and purposes, all intents and purposes, the trigger board could be literally sitting in this little small area, sitting right here where the motor was. It could be there. It could be inside here. Any anywhere that it so uh, actually chooses, because what we're going to be doing, it's mostly going to be on the actual um, the rod when it gets pulled back. So I'm just looking to see how it's all, um, ooh. Oh, wait, it's this way, okay. I was like, what just bounced back at me? Okay, so. So normally for the Gen 1s, you just actually mount the, um, the trigger board on the inside. Because it, with it being a universal one. However, I'm looking at, I'm guessing this is like the newest one, because I'm seeing a lot, there's a lot more going on here than what has normally been set for it. So that's why I'm looking to see what exactly is going on with this, partic with this particular one. Like, like I said, most most um, bull pups, they have a rod that comes all the way back to the um, gearbox and it hits the, the micro switch that's on the inside. This one, however, does not have the... Well, let me... Refer. It has the micro switch. However, the micro switch is actually in the front, which is actually pretty interesting for me. I've never actually seen... Well, I've seen micro switches up front, but then it runs it to the back. So I'm just trying to think, how would I sit here and accomplish this? Because it's not how I was going to, it's not how I envisioned how it was going to go through. Let me see what. Okay, I 
kept I keep hearing the wiring and all that stuff. That's why. All right, so let me see what this section is right here, where the wiring is all like funneling in. I'm wondering if there is some sort of thing I can work with. Otherwise, I may have to go back to the drawing board on this one and um, rethink my strategy as far as HPA in this one. I may, I may have to do some extra behind the scenes work on this one. up my uh, precision set. Always good to have a professional kit. Okay, so now I'm on point three. Charge on point five. Yep, got a match. Alright, so let's see what's going on in here. Because the wirings are funneling down this way. So I want to see what exactly is going on down here. Because if it is, if it's what I am hoping it's not. And of course it is. Okay. Hmm. Because I see, I see a, a board in here. this board all the way out. Oh, wow. Okay. Let me see. Okay. Yeah. This is gonna... Okay. So, the way this Tavor is set up, it, it it's basically like a proprietary uh, proprietary setup so so this is actually gonna take me a little bit of thinking power to it so there is an actual you know a board that's actually on the inside of here that is actually controlling everything that's gonna be interesting so I'm wondering so I may have to put this back together and actually see how this thing acts when it does semi and full because yeah this is going to be interesting alright so Because if I can at least see what the, um, or at least how the micro switch is acting in here, I might be able to figure out a way to either incorporate the actual thing in here, or if it's, I guess, going to do something completely different. Okay, so the top, all right, so the top, there's two micro switches in here, from what I can see. 
there is the bottom one that is for the auto and that's the bottom one select fire and then there's a top one yeah I'm gonna have to do some homework luckily I got some time on this one so the question is So the two plug wire yeah th I'm gonna have to do some homework on this one guys cuz I see the one with the fire that's just to activate everything I gotta see where that wiring goes there's at least a two there's the two pin wiring that looks like controls the selector as far as what that does and then are there any sort of So, the two pin ghost is the power, while the three pin is the selector. Okay. All right. So, all right. So, damn. I really am have to do some homework on this one. All right. So the two pin is the selector, or the three pin is the selector, the two pin is the trigger switch. The trigger switch, as far as soldering, that's going to be easy. It's that selector that I have to figure out how to work in. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do some homework real quick. Hold up. Cause I wasn't expecting the um I was not expecting this. Uh psh. I was expecting more of like the older ones, the older Tavors, where everything was all, you know, located in the back. Like like one from before. So let me see if I can find something that may be what I'm in, what engine I'm putting in? I'm putting in the Hydra Gen Two, and because the uh, uh, all right, hold on, hit with an ad. I'll wait. Let me know when you're done with the ad. I'll um, I can sit here and uh, stop. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that is done. Uh, so, like I said, what I'm doing is. It's an Inferno, uh, I mean, not Inferno, damn. I'm so used to doing Infernos. It is the Hydra Gen 2 with an offset nozzle. So as you can see, it's slightly offset for the Tavor. So that way, the um, it sits right in there. Because the engine itself, because the engine, or the, the um, nozzle itself, is just off center here because I'm wearing black. Let me put this behind the paper towel. So the engine is actually just off centered. That would that would warrant it with you know an offset nozzle. What I didn't expect was the fact that there is an actual trigger board control. There's a, a electric control unit 
inside the grip portion of it. That I was not expecting. So now I have to sit here I have to sit here and look at how I can um, how I can sit here and have this done. So let's see. Because it is the CTAR. Let's see. Do, 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 do. There are no pictures. Hmm. Everything is, all the action is in the front. The back is just housing things. That's going to be the interesting part. Damn. Uh, this is really going to be interesting. See, this is what's really going to be interesting. Let me see. Uh, let me see. Aries to war. MOSFET. Because if, if I can find a video on how a, a MOSFET was put in there, then I can figure out a way to do the HPA setup. All right, so they swap, swap your handguard. Let me see the internals. Huh. Okay, so a lot of these have the micro switch on the inside. Okay. Yeah, this may end up being a short stream. I was really hoping it'd be the one with the micro switch on the inside. Yeah, I know. It, it sucks. I most most Tar Twenty Ones they have the they have the micro switch and all that stuff inside the gearbox itself. So you can run the universal wiring kit and all that stuff, you know, pretty smoothly. However, the entire micro switch and all that stuff is actually in the front. So I may need to go back and take a look and see if the, yeah, see, this is, okay. Right. Hmm. All right. Because this comes all the way from the back. All right. So if I run, let me at least get this.
Alright. So, what I'm probably going to have to end up doing is repurpose. Well, I'm going to use the micro switch that are already in place of that are already in place of it to basically I'm going to have to splice the wiring to where I can still run the micro switches that are already intact embodied in the system, in the setup itself but then integrate the wiring and all that stuff to actually um, work so what I mean by that is since it already has the micro it has the micro switch and wiring set up to actually activate it so my next plan of attack would be At least experience, at least see how the wiring interacts just by looking at how the selector is. Because I, I, I honestly was not expecting this, this, uh, this to escalate that quickly as far as uh, builds and sells. So this might end up being more of a front wiring setup than a rear setup as I was kind of hoping for. All right, I, I, I think I got it. All right, I'll probably, I'll probably have to do this part off camera just to make sure that everything all works. So this right here is the micro switch setup that is inside the the Aries, the IWI CTAR made by Aries. So this one, this micro switch here on the bottom is the selector switch. Whereas the top one is going to be the trigger switch. So what I may end up doing is I'm more likely either going to splice here on the inside portion or on the back side, splice the wirings in. I'm more likely going to be coming in here on the inside just so that way it's a lot cleaner and actually mount the, the wiring here in the front, like kind of have it all in the front area and then run the FCU, run the engine and FCU internals towards the back or at least the main wiring itself so the wiring for the solenoid if I have enough of it that's gonna be the determining factor so so I'm gonna run the solenoid or I'm gonna run the wiring from the from the back end the solenoid is gonna sit here and run all the way up to the front with the FCU inside the foregrip of it. No, but that's not gonna work. Huh. Okay. Part of being a tech is you know, trying to figure out some of these, how some of these things are going to work. So, which is both a blessing and a curse. So I'm getting rid of, so I'm not going to be functioning on that wiring anymore. Alright, so that's pretty much what I'm going to have to do. So, 
what I'm probably going to end up doing is I'll go ahead and just um, end the stream now. Well, I'll, I'll let people I'll let the people decide. Either I go off camera, test my idea out, and then uh, get back with y'all, whether it be on Twitch or Discord or uh, YouTube and all that stuff, and let y'all know what my findings are, or I just full send it live. And we'll, we'll find out together. Because I've got an idea on how I want to do it. It's just going to be on whether y'all want to see me go through it or y'all just want to see the end results. Because my, like I said, my idea is just use the, use the micro switches that are already in place. And just find a way to, if I have to splice the wiring to extend it to get to where I need it to go. I'm going to splice the wiring, extend it. How I need it and go from there so I'm gonna let I'm gonna leave that up to y'all I can wait a few minutes and see what everybody says or what you know I'm gonna do say do that off do that work off camera so you can really focus on it okay all right yeah so what i'll do is i will actually um do the, do the soldering wire it up and actually test it um if you have my instagram i'll probably po i'll post up like a little short video or picture on there same thing with facebook and i'll also post up on uh, the discord I'm in the Airsoft International Discord and the Speed Soft Hub Discord. Those would be like the main two that I usually bust around like that. Might be a pain in the ass. Hopefully not. I'm hoping not. It, it shouldn't be by what I'm thinking of doing. It shouldn't be a hassle. It's going to be more of a hassle of just making sure everything is all fit in there. Because if it doesn't, if this idea doesn't quite work, then I'm going to have to sit here and re- possibly redo the whole entire thing and hopefully it doesn't come to that so i'm gonna go ahead and end the stream early and i'm gonna get started doing the soldering work and i'll make sure i get back with y'all all right so like i said sorry it had to be like this i wasn't expecting it to actually be in this sort of configuration so i'm gonna work on this and i'll get back to y'all sound cool But, uh, yeah, Champagne, if if you're in the Discord with me, uh, just uh, mention me. Same thing with you, uh, Breacher. All right, y'all take it easy. Oh,